Hey guys, I'm excited to talk about today's video with you guys. So of course I'm going to end up eventually having the time to do screen recording. You know, I just have been very busy lately so I haven't had time to work on setting that up. So we're going to go with recording my screen. Uh, and we're going to be talking about disposable virtual machines in Cube's operating system. And that's what we're running here. This is Cube's operating system. This is a really important subject. So I hope you watch the whole video and I hope you share it with others. So make sure to like it, make a comment, ask about something, or just leave a comment on, you know, what you think about the video. That'll really help the channel. Uh, let's get into it. Let's talk about the topic of the day, which is disposable virtual machines. These are really important. One of the most vital parts of cubes is the fact that you have access to not only different virtual machines that use heavy isolation, uh, there's also the fact that you have what's known as a disposable virtual machine. Now, what would you do with that? Well, I'm going to tell you a story. I normally get regularly emails from different people, including security researchers and others that are of interest to me. And so, of course, you know, we all get those emails that are from people we know. But did you know in certain attacks, if your company is being targeted, maybe just one employee gets attacked, one employee gets sent a malicious file by email or even a malicious link that can lead to an exploitation through a file. Um, you may wonder how to handle that. How do you handle emails with strange files? But files that seem very pertinent to your situation, your company, your business, whatever it may be, your family, a lot of times that'll happen. So if an attack goes through, the entire contact list may end up being spammed with malicious files. So your entire contact list may end up actually being mass emailed the same malicious files in a way that's going to attract your interest. So it may look like some kind of important document, something that you you know, will definitely want to open because it may affect you in a big way. Or maybe it's just something from family that you want to open because you believe it's genuine. Like I said, if one person gets attacked, the entire contact list can be attacked through a chain mail. Sometimes they even use fake chain mails to make it look more legitimate. So you may see a variety of replies as if this had been passed through all of the different people that person knows. So that adds another part that gives it more legitimacy and that's there's so many different techniques that are used to to fool you into opening these files opening these links now how would i handle that and how i handle it regularly is with a disposable virtual machine in cubes so this is something you definitely want to take advantage of you shouldn't be opening any files or suspicious links or even what doesn't look like a suspicious link uh, if you're not 100% sure of it, but really it's always safer to open it in a disposable virtual machine anyway. Now what what is the benefit of the disposable virtual machine? Well, just like the name suggests, this virtual machine will open up a single application to do whatever you asked it to do with that file and then it destroys everything after you're done. So you can open something that you otherwise wouldn't be comfortable opening and this can help save you and your machine from serious problems. And so uh, I'm going to show you real quick what you might do in this situation. Let's say you get a suspicious email. And this is a video I've been meaning to make for quite a while. I did send it out to followers on the blog, the subject and the idea behind this video a little while back, maybe a year or two ago. So let's go ahead and take a look. Let's pretend I got this email to me as I do get emailed files regularly. And given the content I produce, sometimes people may, may like my content. Sometimes people may want to see if they can fool me into opening something malicious. Now, I, the files I received today are not this, but I did receive files today. And since I had to use a disposable virtual machine to check them out, uh, I figured I'd share this information with you today as I think it'll be helpful to you. So this is an interesting file. It's a PDF file. Uh, we aren't sure about it though. And 
you know, for to begin with. With my email, I also use a disposable virtual machine. So you can see which ones are disposable here. Uh, you can see disposable here. You have a disposable virtual machine, DISP. Uh, you also have the disposable Hunix right here. So if I open Tor Browser here, check out my email as I have done here. Uh, I get a file from someone I may know, or maybe I don't know, but they are providing very interesting information that is very specific to devices I have or something else very specific to me or my channel or anything else about me, um, maybe even family. Uh, I may not want to open that on a normal operating system. And not only may I not want to open it on a normal operating system, I may not want to open it in a persistent uh, virtual machine on cubes. So something I save files to, something I, you know, the standard other cubes that I may work with. For a safer route, what you're going to want to do is download the file using a virtual machine using, in my case, Hunix disposable virtual machine. Then what I'm going to do, I'm not even going to open it on there. I'm going to right click it and just show you an example. So you right click on that file after you've downloaded it. So once you do download it, you can click this arrow here and you can open the directory where it's stored and it'll open up a disposable uh, folder for you. And there you'll see the file and then you can right click on it and then hit edit in a disposable virtual machine or view in a disposable virtual machine. That's going to open up an entirely new virtual machine. As you can see right up here in the top right, it's starting up this temporary disposable virtual machine just for my purpose of checking out this file. So depending on the file and the actual interest in the party who sent it, uh, you may have even to worry about possible direct connections out. So in that case, you'll want to have it opened in something like the Hunix disposable virtual machine. That will ensure that even if your IP connects. So for example, uh, another case is if you were to open a disposable Fedora virtual machine, uh, if you were to you know, have something that needed to connect out, it would reveal your real IP address. So you don't want to do that. So you may want to use something like a Hunix disposable virtual machine. That'll ensure that only a Tor exit node IP address is shared if it's, say, connecting out. And I'm going to give you another example. I made a video three years ago. So as you can see, it's opened in this temporary virtual machine, this disposable, where it self-destructs after I'm finished with it. So once I close this out, which it is an interesting document, um, but your case may be different. You may work at a company, you may own a company, you may be concerned about being targeted by competitors or targeted you know, for intelligence gathering by your competitors, corporate intelligence. Uh, you just don't know what you may be targeted by, uh, depending on who you are and what interest someone may have in you. So this could be business, this could be family, this could be disputes, legal disputes, other things along that nature. Um, and so I'm going to close this out and it's going to end that uh, disposable virtual machine for that. And then, so as you can see, shutting down this virtual machine, it's a disposable, so it self-destructs. So I'm also going to bring up at the end of this video... I did make another video that has some relation to this. It didn't get a lot of views because I guess the algorithm wasn't, you know, wanting to push it. I don't really know. Um, but in this case, I created a file to talk about watch out for hidden code. So to kind of segue over into this subject, if you're ever on GitHub or another Git site where you want to download a fork, you got to be really careful about forks because you don't know if it's been audited by anyone, and it probably hasn't, to be honest. So you could be given a file like this, or this file may be hidden among other files you have. Now, what we see with this file is we have base64 code here that basically conceals the fact that it's actually going to share the MAC address, the permanent MAC address of that computer with a remote party. So I created this file as an example, to, just as a lesson in privacy, as it says here. So check out my video on that, and you can see the demonstration yourself. So it opens up a netcat shell here, and when that person runs that file, it could be even part of an install script. So it may be hidden amongst other files 
You know how packages can be when you're compiling code. There can be several directories and files hidden within several other directories within directories. So you may have, you know, 100 files and you're not going to go through them all. So that's why you have to be really careful about your sources. It's always best to go with the original. If you do go with a fork, you might want to try it in a disposable virtual machine, but you really might want to inspect it. Um, because in this case, what it does, it hides it in base64 encoding, then it sends the MAC address to a remote party using Netcat, then it even removes itself. And so even if you were to run it and inspect it later, all the evidence would have been gone. And so that's just another example of types of things that can be out there. Because one of the biggest ways that people or companies are compromised is through email. And email targeting, spear phishing as it's known, um, this is very common tactic. In fact, it's one of the most common ways companies are compromised is through an employee that isn't quite sure what's in that file. And they may get it by email. You know, there's different things like, for example, there's a... Uh, script I might cover this it's called the harvester you can harvest all the emails for a domain so if you have a company domain another example uh, someone could collect all the company emails on that domain then they could use a spear phishing attack to target those different employees and they could even do some extra research and find out very uh, specific things about those people to try and make a more well-crafted attack. So I, I hope you enjoyed this introduction to disposable virtual machines on cubes and I'm looking forward to sharing more with you on cubes and we're also going to go back into kick secure. I really enjoy both operating systems and I'm looking forward to covering more with you guys. So make sure to follow the blog at bmc.link slash polititech slash posts and uh, make sure to like the video, leave a comment if you have one. And I appreciate all of you who are following. And if you're not following, make sure to hit the subscribe button and give it a like, leave a comment. And I'll be back later with more on how to protect your security and privacy.